Hello, guys and gals, lords and ladies, saints and sinners of every kind. Welcome to the Rise of Jerusalem, and today I want to talk about something that everyone hates talking about. That is, right, I'm going to say it and you're going to say, ugh, discernment. Uh, discernment is the worst, isn't it? Trying to figure out what God's plan for your life is. It's just, it's the worst. It's so boring. It's annoying. You're just like, God, I'm willing. Just, you know, pick up, call me already and tell me what the plan is because I'll do whatever. Just, I want to know my plan for my life. Well, today I want to talk about how that idea of discernment is wrong. Like, we have a very wrong idea of discernment. And hopefully, we're going to get a better idea of discernment. And... Hopefully, by changing your mind to discernment, you'll realize why discernment really doesn't actually suck. Completely. Completely. It's still a bit annoying, but it's actually really amazing. So I decided to do this episode after reading this awesome quote by Fulton Sheen. He says, Patience is power. Patience is not the absence of action. Rather, it's the process of timing. Rather, it is timing. So I decided to do this episode after reading this awesome quote by Fulton Sheen. He says, Patience is power. Patience is not the absence of action. Rather, it is timing. It waits on the right time to act for the right principles in the right way. Patience is not the absence of action. So, okay, so with the sermon, a lot of times it says, have patience in God. I did actually an episode on this a couple weeks ago. You can look at it right here about discernment. Well, not discernment, but waiting. You know, waiting, patience, trusting God. It'll all be fine. But here's the thing. It still kind of stinks because you're literally sitting there waiting. You're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Um, am I supposed to be doing this? Am I supposed to be doing this? God, why don't you tell me now? I'm ready, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're not ready. See, we're like cake, okay? Cake, it's not that when you're baking a cake, right? When you put it in the oven, what happens is all of the different elements come together to make what is a cake. So you have the eggs, the flour, the sugar, the butter, yada, yada, yada. I don't bake, so I don't actually know. So you have this cake and it has to wait in the oven, but it's not like not moving still. It's still doing something. It's becoming greater. Everything in it and around it is bringing itself together such that it becomes something amazing, greater than it could have been. So if you're baking a cake and you pull it out too soon, it's gonna be disgusting, it's not ready. If you pull it out too late, well then it's gonna be really gross. And I'm not saying that, oh, if you don't follow God's plan exactly, your life is gonna be miserable. That's not true at all. Like, what happens is, don't keep your options open too long. That's, that's waiting till the cake's already done. But also, don't worry about like being ready now. You'll be ready when God wants you to be ready. All right? So if you wait and you're like, God, why not now? Well, think about that cake. Like, if you pulled out that cake too soon, what's going to happen? Well, the cake is going to be gross and not ready for consumption. A lot of times, whenever we talk about discernment, we have to talk about dating, right? Um, and so let's say scenario, yada, yada, yada. Person thinks that they're ready for a relationship and, oh, God, send me my significant other. Well, um, you're not meant to have the significant other yet because you are not supposed to want someone else for you. You're supposed to want someone else so that you can have someone to help. You need someone who can express the love of God, both you and them. If you haven't read the book Three to Get Married by Fulton Sheen, amazing book. I think I've already talked about it like twice. I love the book so much. It's such a great book about how love is God, the man, and the woman. It's all three of them. And so you have to remember when God is waiting, he's preparing you just like that cake to be ready to be consumed by another, not physically, not in another, you know, not, this isn't cannibalism, but consumed, have your love be able to be consumed by another. Because while you're waiting for that other significant person, for your help seek, for your life saver, as it says in the old Greek translation of the Old Testament, your life saver, while you're waiting for that life saver, you have to make sure that you're becoming the person who you are meant to be so that you can help them. I honestly think this is a lot easier for guys because guys, we're very much about like, I just need someone to help. I want to be the man and the chivalrous person who will help this woman get to heaven and help her in all things and defend her honor and love her and all of this stuff. But at the same time, you have to remember that you might not be ready yet. You might not have learned something. You might have to go through something first. She might have to go through something first. So two cakes in an oven, one of them gets pulled out too soon, it's not ready for the other. They're both going to be ready at the same time. And I'm not saying that they have to be completely perfect people. It can be at the end of a bad relationship, your friend helps you and that will, person will be your future husband wife. It can be anything, but it's that moment, that timing. When you're asking God, hey, get me out early, you know, give me what I want early, you're basically telling God, I'm not ready, but I still want to do something. I still want to be um, consumed by another. But that's not how it works because God has a plan for your life. God has a perfect person who will put into your life. 
but at the same time, make sure you're not waiting. Because if you wait, you become that overdone cake. So if you see someone who you like, you know, go after it. But pray about it. Do it prayerfully, right? Don't just say, oh, I like this person. I can't wait. Blah, blah, blah. Go. Become friends with them first. You got plenty of time, especially in college. I see all these people rushing into relationships. It's like, chill. Wait. You're fine. There's no problem. I don't see why you would want to rush into this. You can't marry him for another four years anyways because you're not going to marry until you're out of college. Chill. Become friends with the person. That way, if it doesn't work out, it's going to be even better because you'll still at least be friends. And if it does work out, fantastic. Then you knew each other better. And a lot of the things that could have got you angry, you learned about while you were still friends. I don't see a problem with this. And I'm going to be talking more about dating in a later episode, but come on, guys. Discern. When people hear the word discern, they're like, oh, the priesthood, too, or anything. Yes, if God, if you hear the voice of God saying, go to the priesthood, go to the seminary, do it. If you have an inclination of, oh, I really appreciate the way the priest does, and I really think it's absolutely beautiful, that doesn't mean you're necessarily called, but look into it. Like, every guy should actively discern the religious life, because every guy could be called to the religious life. You never know. But again, don't wait. And don't take every little thing you think as a inclination from God, right? So if you have a dream about, you know, being a priest, that doesn't automatically mean you're supposed to be a priest. Um, you'll know if God tells you something, right? And this, this, is, this leads into another really dumb point that people have about discernment. They think, and I often think, well, discernment is like sitting by a phone, right? Sitting, sitting by the phone and waiting for God to call, right? Like pretend this is a landline. I don't know. Like, it's just sitting there. And you're just waiting for God to call you. And when God calls you, then you're able to pick it up and say, yes, God. Okay, this is the person I'm supposed to marry. Fantastic. Let's go for it. Thank you, God. Peace, bro. And you're done. That's not how it is at all. See, the phone is going to ring and you are going to hear it. But while you're doing it, work around the house. Jump around. Play with a ball. I don't know. Have fun. Not sinful fun, but fun. Just make sure while you're doing all this, don't put on headphones. I'm not saying literally don't put on headphones. I'm saying don't fill your life with discordant noise. I could make a really bad 21 Pilots reference here. Then I've actually done an episode on 21 Pilots and discordant noise right there. Watch it. Because this sword, discordant noise, this just this droning in our lives really distracts us from God and his plan. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, you know, do X, Y, Z, yada, 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 because as long as it's not simple, okay? Just, just have fun. Enjoy your life. Just don't have sin. Don't be afraid of like, oh, sinning. Because if you're strong and you're praying and you're attending the sacraments and all that, you'll be fine. When the time comes, you'll have the prudence to make the right decision. So here's what you have to do. While you're waiting, all right, and you're doing all this stuff, God will call and it's going to go straight to speakerphone. You don't have to pick it up. It's going to go straight to speakerphone. And God is going to speak to you. Because you don't have headphones on, you're going to hear it. And when God speaks to you in that moment, you just have to act on whatever he's telling you. You have the ability, if you hear God's voice, to do whatever you want. The thing is, it's your choice. And I'm not saying you're going to hear some great mystical voice. Go marry this person. Go to the priesthood. It may not happen. It might. I don't know. You could be a mystic and have great revelations from God. But most likely, you're just going to hear that still small voice. You're going to hear that small whispering wind. It's not going to come in a hurricane or a forest fire. God's going to speak to you in the time and moment he wants to. You just have to make sure you're listening. That's what discernment is. Discernment is being that cake and waiting for the right time. Not thinking, oh God, pull me out now. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I mean, do stuff, yeah. Be active, make good friends. But don't worry about anything. Because God is going to have you. God says don't worry a lot in the Bible, by the way. It's don't worry about it. He's got it. He knows when he's going to pull you out. You're going to say, God, you know, I'm not sure about this. Well, trust him. He's got it. He's the divine baker. The divine baker has going to pull you out. He's got it. He knows when the right time is for you to be done. It's going to be 350, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You never know. But when God's going to pull you out at the right time, you are going to know. As long as you make sure that you're living your life in such a way that you're not filling your life with evil things that are going to prevent you from hearing God, i.e. sin, so go to confession, pray often, have a good relationships, make friends, have fun. But make sure when God calls, you're listening. Because when you hear something, it could be, it's just, just be a nudge of just like, hey, that person. Or it could just be, you know, you're spending time and you feel like you really become attracted to someone. Or you could feel like, hey, I have all these great friends and everything, 
but I'm really drawn to mass. You know, I'm really drawn to the priesthood or I'm drawn to a religious life. Maybe you're drawn to become a monk. Maybe you're drawn to become a sister. Maybe you're drawn to be a mother. Maybe you're drawn, very few people are, maybe you are drawn to the single life. You never know. Just make sure that when God is telling you something, you have the ability to listen. You are listening up. That's it. That's discernment in a nutshell. So don't think about discernment as, well, you have to be ready and sitting there waiting by the phone for God to call. No. He's going to call. You're going to hear him. Just don't put on headphones so you can't. And don't worry about anything. He's going to pull you out. The divine baker knows how to bake you well. So thank you everybody so much for watching. Hopefully that makes a lot more sense about discernment. Hopefully it makes you a little bit happier, maybe, or a little bit maybe more trust in God. If you think this is something that someone needs to hear, please, by all means, share this video with them. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch a really awesome episode on tolerance and hating the sin, loving the sinner, click right up there to the book card. Um, that's all I have for today, guys. Hopefully you're having a great day. And uh, thank you everybody so much for watching. And as it was in the beginning, is now it ever shall be. Rise up. Thank <laughs> you.